Hello and welcome back to Cycle Fab. I'm Larry. Today I'll be disassembling the front end on the Suzuki GS 550, uh, the one I'm making the street tracker out of. Then I'll be powder coating the lower part of the leg. So why don't y'all come on with me and we'll get to this. Okay, the forks are off. Now, once you get them off, what I always like to do is look somewhere on the inside of the lower legs and you'll find a number and also a manufacturer's name. You probably won't need this information, but I like to keep it just in case. That way I know what type of forks they are. I know who made them. I know what the model number is on them. So in case I do need parts, it's a lot easier to find them that way uh, versus looking up, you know, hey, I've got a 1981 Suzuki GS550. I need this part number. What kind of shock are they? So on and so forth. Now, these forks only have 14,000 miles on them, but these are old forks, okay? And they've been stored in the barn at least since 1993. So while I have them apart, I'm going to go ahead and put new fork seals in them. This is by All Balls Racing. I love these guys, they build really good products. Never let me down. It doesn't look like they're leaking at all, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and change those out and get them disassembled. Then we're gonna start on the lower legs. Now, what I'm basically going to do to them is just sandblast them, but there's some things I'm going to grind off, like the casting seams on the back around the brake where the brake caliper mounts are, uh, stuff like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and take them apart. Hey guys, I just want to touch base with you before I really get started on something. And that's taking these little casting marks out. I, I can't stand them, they're left over from the molds. And they're not really obtruse. I notice them, I'm sure other people notice them. And anytime you're painting or doing powder coat, whenever you have a high edge, uh, the chances of paint or powder coat really sticking to that edge are very slim, so that's gonna be its thinnest point. So you would like to kind of get rid of those before you paint or powder coat over them. Yeah, I just don't like the looks of them. They stand out like a sore thumb. So what I wanna do is take this off 
with this. Now I'll get to this in just a second. But anyway, you see this right here? That edge, easy to do. I mean, no problem whatsoever. This is just a red Scotch-Brite wheel. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. Just gently go over it and it comes off really literally in a few seconds. Now, the most three used tools in this shop is this, a ribbon sander, and a D-Bird tool. Air power, of course, all of them. I use these things on every job. I use them constantly. Just, they're all the time being used. And these are cheap Harbor Freight tools, really. I oil them every day before I use them, and they blasted me. Well, these are the original ones. I haven't had them go out on me yet. They will eventually, the bearings will go out. But I've been using these for about three, three and a half years now. So, yeah, they're still good. I'm, I don't know how common that is for Harbor Freight tools to last that long. Uh, I do take care of my tools, but yeah, these are good little guys. They're loud, they're really noisy compared to the high dollar ones, but you just can't beat the price on these things. Anyway, I just wanna let you know what's going on with these and show you that little trick. But yeah, it's pretty essential that you get rid of these if possible, it doesn't take that long to do it. Well, I got them sandblasted. Now I have to degrease them and we'll powder coat them. But uh, yeah, they came out great. I mean, as to be expected, this isn't a polish job. It's just a bead blast and powder coat. And like I said, I went and took away all the mold markings or the mold ridges. Anyway, it, it should turn out just fine. Okay, I got one side of the legs powder coated. If you notice, I was using a Harbor Freight powder coat unit. Uh, they're okay, all right? They're definitely not the best. Uh, actually, they're probably the bottom. But if they do okay, I'm going to get a better one. I just have not done it yet. I wanna get the $1,000 unit from, uh, I can't remember their name right now. Anyway, but yeah. You know, if I'm going to do this professionally, especially a full frame, uh, <laughs> Harbor Freight just, it's, it'll do it, but my God, you got to work with it. I don't know if you've noticed, but see this right here? This is an extra ground. I've got this to a ground rod about six feet long hammered into the ground outside my shop. Uh, I would probably need that or probably go ahead and do it even with a more expensive unit, but this little guy right here needs all the help he can get, really. So if you're just getting started off powder coating and you want to kind of see if you like it, yeah, they're great for that and other things, but yeah, I really need to get a better unit. Now we get to go to the oven. All right, this is my powder coat oven. Uh, I'll do a video on this later on, but I built this myself. The only ovens I could find that was the size that I wanted was about five grand and up, and I just wasn't going to pay that. So I built my own. It's not as pretty, but it works great. So like I said, I'll do another video uh, in the future on that. So let's go ahead and fire these things up and get these sparks cooked.
Not too shabby. Came out nice, actually. Well, let's hang these up and let them cool off before I touch them. All right, all right. These came out great, man. Now, the ridges that I polished off, that really adds a little bit of extra detail to any project you're doing. Just that fine little bit of attention really made these pop. Now, you don't always have to powder coat the bottom legs. So you can leave them all polished out. That's fine too, and that really does add a little bit of extra to the bike itself. But this time I wanted to go with a color. I want to go with something that stood out. Now, gray is not a color that really pops or anything like that, but it's going to go in with the rest of the bike as far as the color scheme that I'm going with and all that. So you get a flow from the tank down into the fork legs, down into the wheels, so on and so forth. And I, I think it'll make this project just really come out and look good. Say, so, if you really like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. My channel and I would both really appreciate that. So I'll see you guys next week with something new. Y'all have a good one. Bye.